Order rules meeting call to order invocation. Um, Councilor Austin. Lord, it's a blessing to be here today to, to uh, join together with these uh, fellow men and women who have uh, all stood willing to serve you and to serve the Cherokee people. And we ask that your blessings be on each of them as they uh, serve. We ask that uh, your blessings be on each of them as they uh, uh, go through the process of uh, analyzing and deciding and uh, uh, doing what, it, what, what we all believe is best. And Lord, we ask that our, uh, our people uh, feel your blessings and uh, receive your blessings in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> okay, roll call, Shelley. Yes, Honey. Brian Warner. Honey. Bill England. Honey. Keith Austin. Here. Harvey Buzzard. Here. Sean Crittenden. Honey. Mike Dobbins. Here. Hannah Duncan. Honey. Wanda Hatfield. Honey. Rex Jordan. Here. Big Blood. Honey. Mike Shambaugh. Here. Mary Baker Show. Honey. Theo Smith. Here. Victoria Vesquez. Honey. David Watkins. Honey. We have a problem. <coughs> Thank you, Shelley. This time I entertain approval of the minutes. Motion A B approved. Got a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Signify by saying aye. Okay. Um, reports. Marshal Shannon Buell. Shannon is out today, so I'll be taking this place. I think you all have our monthly report. Um, I think it was a little slow the month of May. Because of the election, and then we were deployed to the flood in Fort Gibson on the 22nd. We ran operations there through the uh, <coughs> 3rd of June. So I'll give you a recap on that. Uh, we ran a total of 189 deployments while we were there. Uh, the Eastern Band of Cherokee sent out their swift water team to assist us, uh, along with my teams and the emergency management teams and also we uh, acquired a formal former bia officer who now works for cne uh, he was their airboat operator there so uh, we kind of commandeered him for a couple of weeks and uh, so he was able to run the airboat that we had out there uh, while our guys ran the uh, swift water teams uh, we've been deployed to Hurricane Katrina, the Joplin tornadoes, Hurricane Harvey, and now this flood here. So uh, we've been sent pretty much anywhere there has been a natural disaster with our, our special operations teams. A um, couple of highlights, I think, are um, the OG&E safety representative uh, sought us out specifically to take care of their power plant personnel. Uh, they were pretty much surrounded by water after the second day of the flood. So we ran um, their supplies to them. We had one emergency medical evacuation there, and we also did their uh, crew swap outs. So they had basically nine to 10 people there that needed swapped out every few days. So uh, they tasked us for getting them their safety or safely and then bringing their other crews back. We were also asked by the Muskogee County EMS to transport their medics from one side of the river to the other on their cruise shifts uh, swap outs in Fort Gibson. So uh, I think that speaks volumes for the training that our guys receive and um, also the respect that we get in these disasters that we go to. Uh, we've always left with a positive impact on the communities that we, we are uh, sent to. Uh, so I'd like to thank the chief and the deputy chief and the council members that came down checked on us, uh, called, made sure we had everything we needed. Um, as you guys know, deployments aren't cheap. Uh, they cost quite a bit of money. We're in process right now of uh, working on the reimbursements for that um, through our emergency management <coughs> system. So um, we had some protective equipment we needed and uh, it was sent in immediately. So I, I wanna thank everybody for pitching in and making sure that all of our guys were taken care of. Uh, if you have any questions or anything else, I'll try to answer them for you. 
Any questions for our marshal service? <coughs> Councilor Shamrock. Not a question, just to say thank you. I mean, you guys were busy. Um, once again, you, you reacted to a disaster and, and you went where you were needed, uh, whether it was Jay, or whether it was with the floods. Um, you know, you guys took the time out to do your job and just want to say thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. You got something to add, Tom? Yeah, Mr. Speaker, if I could, I, I want to brag on uh, Mr. Tanner. I have known him for quite a while, uh, became associated with him through the bike ride where he assisted us and built <coughs> what I consider a friendship with Danny through that experience. But we had a team of eight people from Florida that were here, uh, and they are experts, uh, very well respected. I immediately knew that they were very professional and knew what they were talking about in dealing with disasters. In their briefing, as they walked out, they said, we have technology, we have computer systems, we are used to dealing with this, we have the teams, we have the support systems in Florida. One thing we do not have is a Danny Tanner. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing on operations, and they were amazed that one man could manage such an operation and have the skill sets on the ground to deal with situations. And they gave the example of counting between a lightning strike or a thunder and a lightning strike, and knowing when to operate the boat. He said, "We've got we've got resources that can't marvel what the Danny Taylor does." We should have had you looking for those barges they couldn't find. <laughs> <coughs> no, we appreciate all that you do, and I know a lot of times you have to go out on a call in harm's way, but well, we're, we're proud of our marshal service and how you're able to coordinate and, and bring in other entities to, to take care of our people. That yeah, doesn't go unnoticed, so we appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Okay. Next report. Yes, Councillor Austin. Uh, well, what a comment and a thank you. Uh, emergency management, uh, you know, during these periods of disaster, certain things seem so almost insignificant, but they're not at all. Uh, FOIL's water treatment, water system has been down for ever since this thing started. Uh, a pipe is in the dam spillway area, and they can't access it until the water goes down and their water towers have been empty for the last three weeks. So they have no uh, water. Water is very intermittent. It's uh, no pressure, very low service in that community. But emergency management has delivered pallets of water numerous times to uh, the city of Foyle so that the people there have uh, a quality drinking water available for them. And those things, in other times wouldn't make the big news and right now they are the they are the little stories behind the scenes of the fact that we're not forgetting those things while we're dealing with these really big big uh, emergencies and uh, those are happening throughout this <coughs> and I appreciate that. Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Yes, Councilor. Also, good job you're doing the brags there. For about six or eight hours there were some very panicky people that didn't know what was going on. And then we got the man out to go to surgery. Mm -hmm. That was, a lot of people really thought that was a really good deal. Appreciate breaks. We did four medical emergencies um, on the water. Um, and also we did transport two critical patients out with the help of EMS. So, and all that was by boats and by water. So they, they did a great job. Anybody else? Good report. Thank you. Did you call the council Critton, do you have something? No, sir. Okay. All right, Office Attorney General, Chrissy Nemo. Good morning. Good morning. I thought today, was, weren't I just here? And I went back and looked, oh, it was. It was 11 days ago, and we haven't had anything uh, significant. All of the cases that I talked about last time are all still pending. Um, no updates on any of those. We try to send them out as soon as we um, hear them. Still no Murphy decision. We've... It'll be within the next uh, two and a half weeks. So um, I think by the next rules, we will have lots of uh, news on that. We'll, of course, share that with council as soon as we get it. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything new to report, and I'll take any questions. Yes, anybody? 
You did good. Go ahead and tear open. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I don't have anything new to report either. Um, we're still at 28 FOIAs and GRAs. I have five outstanding at this time, and everyone should have received a copy of my report. Okay. Any questions? You guys are doing a good job. You're getting off easy today. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Tax Commission, Sharon Swepston. Good morning. I believe you have my report. And I'll try to entertain any questions you might have. Um, I know you had asked me previously about the Catoosa office. I have got a new person that should be starting uh, Monday, this coming Monday. So that'll be three there. I had one that started <coughs> a week or so ago. She lasted three days. <sighs> Yeah. So it's a very busy office, yeah. and people don't realize just what those girls do. And gentlemen, on the I have one gentleman on the front counter, on on those front counters, and they deal with a lot, and it's a lot to deal with. It's not as simple as somebody brings you some papers, you push a button, get their money, and give them a tag. It don't work that way. And so it's just it's really difficult. People get in there and they realize what it is. It's not as simple as everybody thinks it is. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of rules to learn and everything so and it's difficult and that's a very busy office and when you've got 50 or 60 people sitting out there staring at you and you're trying to process and learn I'm sure it's a little bit intimidating but uh, so I still have two openings <laughs> up there so if you know anybody interested the Catoosa office and I I have one opening still at Collinsville we interviewed for that but I don't know if the selection has been made on that one yet or not and I also have an opening at Salisaw I'm not sure where we are with that one either, so. You're just a tough supervisor. <laughs> I guess. I, maybe I expect too much. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Okay. Yes, Councilor Taylor. I have two questions. One is, do you know how many actual physical tags are issued every year? I can. I don't have that number off the top of my head, but I can get it for okay. you. Okay. And then um, you just want new tags. I, I want actual tags that go out the door. Not uh, so. I mean, it might be a renewal, but they've messed it up with their boat. Okay, you're talking about metal like, tags. I'm talking about metal tags. Not the not just the decals. <clears throat> right. That go out. Um, I'd be curious to know that answer. Sure. And then I also had a report that somebody had gone to the Catoosa office, waited for something like two to three hours, and then we're told we're not doing any more, ta any more we're not taking any more today. Okay, now we, Which, we do have a sign, and it's on the website, that we do stop processing at 4.15 in order for them to get balanced and all of that. So I'm sure that that has happened. I don't know about how long the wait was, yeah. but I can tell you if I know who they are because they sign in. It tells me when they signed okay. in and everything, so I can tell you how long they were there. Now, there were some days that... I actually only had one person at the Catoosa office and I had to send from Tahlequah so they don't get there till 9 or 9.15 yeah. and then start and then they have to drive back to <coughs> Tahlequah so then they usually leave around 3.30. So, well, I felt sure that there was some type of announcement made or some way of letting people There are know. signs that okay. posted there that okay. say the last customer will be seen at 4.15. Okay. And they do shut the door. They lock the door. Well, I know they do. And I, and, <laughs> I, and I know you got to cut it off somewhere because they'd be there till midnight. They would if, be, yeah. especially at that office. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know why. And that's why we're asking to expand that, that office. But if I can't get five people, I'm not sure how I'm going to get ten. So. <laughs> I need some workers up there, so. Yeah. That's all I have. Yeah, so Councilor Baker. Shaw. <laughs> Shaw. Anyway. Yes, I didn't finish that. Sharon, those are killer <laughs> shoes, I've got to tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cute. Oh, my God. Okay. I have a question. Uh, a while back, I referred someone to you who was a veteran and interested in a veteran tag uh, yes. for Cherokee Nation. What happened with, I mean, can you share with us our policy on veteran tags? Um, we have several different veteran statuses and it depends on where they live because if they live in the at-large, then we have to abide by the state's rules. So, and that me. affects it a lot because. What, what's the difference between the state and then the end jurisdiction on the veterans tags? On the veterans tags, you're asking me something I don't deal with every day, but on the veterans tags, the state had an active duty status where we didn't but we have since put that in so we have that now 
Um, but there's just difference in the tags that they buy. Like they have a lot of specialty tags, the Purple Hearts and all of that. And we don't usually keep a lot of that. We have a few, but we don't have the amount that the state has. And um, we, we try to do what the state does, and then we try to keep ours at that price or a little less. Anna. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Council and I did, I uh, think, get your citizen taken care of. Thank you. So. Appreciate that, too. Mm -hmm. Sharon, how many counties uh, do we have tag offices in? Um, in the, I have six offices in the 14 county jurisdiction, and I'd have to stop and think. I've got one in Salisaw, Adair, Jay, Collinsville, Catoosa, and Tahlequah. And what I tried to do was set them up hours. where there's a 30 mile driving radius for the 14 counties so that nobody has to drive more than 30 miles to get to a tag office. That's why where they're at is where the locations were picked. <coughs> and uh, is there now any other council people that would be interested in looking at a tag office in, in their area? Everybody. Yeah. Really, I mean, yeah. we don't have one in Nycut. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, where do you live, Joe? You live in Tahlequah. Yeah, but my family lives in Nycut. They have to drive 20 miles to Salisaw, mm -hmm. and these people are all low income. Right. And the only thing that I want to make sure you understand is that there's a quite a bit of overhead that goes into an office. It's not as simple as throwing a desk in there and putting a person in there. Right because we have to have the internet you got to have more than one person you got to have right. several people right. there because they do take leave and call in sick and <laughs> that is lots of cherokees yes so can't just into that. make sure everybody understands that that you know right. that it's right. there is quite a bit of overhead that goes into office and the internet is probably the biggest cost of getting it there and one that works well right and so so dick is interested in Janice. For eight years, I've been. <laughs> but, but I mean, that, that's not an impossibility, right? <laughs> no. If we all got our heads together. <clears throat> uh, I will stress know. that our compact does state that I can't put any offices outside of our jurisdictional area. Oh. <laughs> outside of 14 County? Yes. Okay. I'll get I, that I think Sharon could do a, a, and if you haven't already, looked into where would be the next county where would be the next possible site? What I can do is um, see if Steve can run me a report based on the number of tags sold for the, what counties the citizens live in, and we can look at it from that way. Yeah, that would be good. So, yeah, I can do that. so you can get that, and that might get the ball rolling. Yeah, I can, I can run get, that and see how many, how many votes, tags we be sell, <laughs> because soon, it'll be okay. based on the addresses that they give, and that'll tell us what counties just, the tags are sold in. Uh, it's just we got, we got a lot of Cherokees that's doing around that area. So that's a good request. Nike, I didn't know you didn't have one. Down one. Down no, I've <laughs> <laughs> you got one in Sequoia Bunch. County. Though. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councilor Vasquez. No. You didn't have one? Councilor Dobbins. Uh, this may not be feasible, but the Chickasaws uh, sell their tags through the state agencies. Would that even be possible to have Stillwell state agency Sell we would no longer tags. receive the money that we do for the schools and all of that if you yeah. go through the state agency that is a state. whole different compact and mm -hmm. i i haven't specifically seen the compact but my understanding is and i'm just talking off the cuff because i haven't read it um is that it's based on you pay the state rate and then the state gives and i don't know what the percentage is back to the tribe and then the tribe reimburses the citizen 10 percent but it, they have to, the citizen has to pay the state rate up front, but that would stop all the money that comes in, the 38% that goes to schools and all of that, and any contract that you had with, uh, and it, they would want to compact the whole thing. And so that would disperse of our I don't offices. I think the Chickasaws are as generous with their tag revenue as the Cherokees are. I think they pretty much retain. Yes, and I don't know how much that they, the tribe actually gets back yeah. from their compact. Okay. So. Man. Yeah, they do. A lot. They they allow the state to to be in their business, and the less we do that, the better. Okay. We had a comment from Councilor Shamba. Are you through, Councilor? Yes. Um, what? Um, where does Stillwell get their tags? Salisaw. So how far Salisaw from Stillwell? Probably <coughs> How far? 
Twenty-two miles. Twenty-eight point nine. I mean, they can go to Salisaw or Tahlequah. We get them at both places, so it's just up to that, you know. So, I guess when you pick uh, a place, uh, it's population based. That and I'll tell you, part of it was also based on where I could get office space that was reasonable that was within that 30 mile driving radius because there are some areas that office space, if we didn't have a building there, if I had to rent, it was outrageous. So, and I, I'm not trying to. No. You know, I just, we I did just, have that office at Gore. Yeah. Well, it kind of, it just kind of amazes me that there's not one at Stillwell because Stillwell right. is pretty heavily. Populated. And when we moved to Salisaw, we actually moved into a building and shared space with Diane Kelly's group when we uh, oh. first, and we still are. The building that we have down there is shared by, uh, I believe, three different programs uh, Miss Kelly's area, and then Indian Child Welfare, I believe, and then our office. And there may be more, but I know those three. So. Okay. All right, thank you. Councillor Duncan. Just want to throw this out there that there is some new offices being built in Stillwell for rent, and we got brand new fiber optic internet. Buddy, right there. Okay. Yeah, that that does surprise me that Stillwell doesn't have one. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to put our deputy on the spot. Deputy, um, veterans tags. Have, have you have you uh, looked into? The, the benefit of having a state veterans tag versus a tribal veterans tag is there any difference there one way or another a few dollars speaker i don't i don't i'd rather not uh, say this is you know what i'm saying i, I don't have the knowledge to answer that adequately okay but i'll find out okay i didn't mean to put you on the spot i just i just and proud I of you that you're a veteran I can also bring you something that shows what veterans tags we have, the, what we charge for them, and compared to what the state does. If okay. you would like to see that, are, are we are we at least competitive with the other tribes and what they do for their veterans? Would you as say? As far as I know, we are. Okay. Um, we don't want anybody to get ahead of us now. We like to be number one. Okay, Councilor Smith. But when we had office in Gort, it it was profitable, wasn't it? It was what? It made money, didn't it? I mean, wasn't it? It, it processed a so lot. The one that, that was that? in Gore, it was just that we had a very tiny, tiny space. Mm -hmm. And what we tried to do was move that where we could encompass like Muldrow and all of those areas where that they would be within that 30 mile driving radius. The people to the west of Weber and the Warner, if they had to drive more than 30 miles now. The Tahlequah or Salisaw? Mm -hmm. Like I said, I tried as close as I, I know, could I to know, get them. So. You did good. Yeah. And South Saw's the county seat, so <laughs> that helps. Anybody else? Oh, do, um, okay, do, can the at large population, do they, can we get our tags online, at, like after we get our initial tag? You're, if it's a regular tag, you can, anyone can tag? renew it online. Yes, okay, ma'am. Okay, but like your chair, like after you get your first Cherokee tag, you could do it online? Yes, as long as it's just a regular tag and not like a commercial tag. Or regular, ones okay. that you got to have the extra documents, a farm tag, things like that. You can't get those online. But we have a large population of Cherokees, so if there's ever, in Oklahoma City, so if you ever want to open an office, we... That would be the first place. The compact, and we actually did talk about that, but it is prohibited in our Ain't compact. But I know, counties. I know, I know. So, but we Thank actually you. did talk about that before we got the compact. Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, anybody else? This has been a good discussion. You, we have work to do. <laughs> we thought we had it all taken care of, didn't we? There we go. Okay, good, good report, Sharon. Appreciate you. Okay, next, Gaming Commission, Jamie Hummingbird. <laughs> I still can't believe it. Sharon's a little smaller than I am. Good morning. Good morning, uh, I believe uh, the uh, information made it into your packet this time. I hope I got it in before the deadline. I think I did. Uh, but do have just a brief update for uh, the council on uh, the uh, uh, the efforts to reclaim and move back into our Fort Gibson facility. Uh, the last time we met, um, we were still trying to assess what kind of condition it was in and the, uh, uh, the amount of uh, water that we were gonna have to deal with. The water did infiltrate the building 
uh, it did uh, fill up a number of um, areas and we were looking at about a half inch to an inch of water on the gaming floor so if you're not familiar with our facilities our gaming machines and everything the gaming floor is actually a raised floor and it sits up above a uh, concrete slab of about two feet so water got in enough to fill that up uh, filled up the uh, liquor storage area uh, which is about eight to ten feet underneath the facility itself so it filled it up all the way to the back of house which is getting into the uh, administrative offices and, and such. Uh, after the waters went down, uh, the uh, facility has been able to be accessed and it's under uh, restricted access by security. Only security and members of uh, uh, safety and environmental health can get in there to take a look at what's going on. I can say right now that efforts are underway to get the uh, uh, facility assessed first and foremost. The water has been pumped out, but now comes the uh, uh, task of figuring out exactly what has to be done. Uh, the first walkthrough happened last Friday. There's another walkthrough scheduled for tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. So we will be going through there to figure out exactly what needs to happen and who's going to do what. Uh, it's a lot of unanswered questions still at this point, but it is, uh, it's underway. And hopefully as things progress, we'll be able to keep the, the council informed of uh, maybe a uh, possible timeline on what efforts are going to be needed and when it's going to be done. So don't have a lot of answers for you on that, but if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Any questions for Jamie? Yes, Councillor Baker Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Shaw's like, uh, Jamie, do, we have, do you feel we have the insurance that will cover the cost that's going to be involved in this? I believe so. I'm not uh, you know, very well versed in CNE's insurance, but they are required by both uh, uh, the compacts that we have as well as uh, our um, own rules and regulations to have insurance. And I know that they do have uh, certain like business interruption type insurance that should help with this. The exact level of coverage that we will have in this area, I couldn't say with 100% certainty, but I could find out for you. This is, I, I don't mean to sound ignorant about this, but do we have a deductible? I mean, I carry deductible insurance. To, I, I'm just curious as what the Cherokee Nation would require as a deductible. That I would have to look for as well. I don't have that information off the top of my head, but I, but I can find that out for you. Okay. Good question. Anybody else? Well, <clears throat> I think what we heard last night from Sean Clayton was that the employees are still being compensated. So that's, that's a good thing. Correct. And they're being reassigned to other places. Yeah, I think the lion's share of the employees have been reassigned over here to our Tahlequah facility, which kind of works out good for them. There were some positions that they were having some difficulty in getting enough numbers in, like in food and beverage and such. So um, again, if there was such a good thing, you know, thing is a good time to have this now would be that time so uh, they've been able to help uh, fill out some vacancies and some openings in uh, Tahlequah those that didn't come to Tahlequah have been either uh, going to Katusa or another property to uh, report for work but everybody is on the clock everybody's earning a paycheck I guess only time will tell how our revenue is going to be here in Tahlequah because I'm sure people that that were going to Fort Gibson probably came to us yeah, I, I would say we. if you were looking at it that way, you would say the Creeks and Muskogee probably got the demographic closer to that town, and we got the ones closer to Tahlequah. Yeah. You know, how, but the actual impact is, is unknown. Yeah, okay. Anybody else? Good report, Jamie. Uh, yes, uh, Councilor Buzzard. Uh, on a different subject, Jamie, I, mean, I know our compacts are coming up in 2020. Right. Did we uh, negotiate with the Oklahoma Horse Racing Commission? Or is that a set fee? Uh, that right now, uh, as far as the uh, pro rata share that we pay under the compact is set. set. Uh, so if any negotiations were to be done with that percentage, it would have to be done with uh, the governor's office. Okay. What, what about the uh, 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 Fair Meadows? Same pay, thing. Pay them about a half million dollars a year. Yeah. And, that, and that's where uh, the efforts between Creek Nation and Osages and us come into play. The, the information as far as how many machines are in that uh, service area are shared, and that's where that pro rata share comes in. Uh, but anything that goes on on those percentages would have to be discussed. Uh, I wonder, does the Osage and Creeks 
pay the same amount as the Cherokees to the track there in Tulsa? To, for Meadows, it fluctuates. Uh, sometimes the Creek Nation has the majority of the machines, sometimes Osage does, sometimes we do. So out of the total okay, number of machines, of right? Yeah, out of the total number of machines, we look at the percentages that each one has, and pays the the uh, the share of that. Uh, I'll, I'll call it a, a stipend that that monthly payment uh, based on the number of machines that we each operate. Is that a is that a negotiated uh, compact with the state too? It's still a part of the overall state gaming act. So uh, I'm sure that at the time the Gaming Act was passed that that was discussed and that number was derived through some type of negotiation. And it would have to go through that same process. The lawmakers would have to come in into play and figure out what that needed to be. Pretty complicated mess. Huh? It's going to be time consuming. Thanks, sir. You good? Yeah, Councilor Shell. Yes, Jim, one more question. That's uh, the... Uh, Compact that's coming up in 2020. 20. Right. Any chance we can ask for sport betting? Last night I was on pins and needles at, uh, on that ball game last night. I got to tell you, my Warriors pulled through. So. Anyway, I, I'm just curious. Any chance we can get sport, sports betting? That is still a question that's out there. I mean, the, the PASPA was repealed last year, making it available to really any state that wants to do it. There's been a number of states that have. Whether or not the state of Oklahoma wants to have that, uh, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, if the if the tribal uh, leadership, whether it's Cherokees or any other tribe, really uh, want to pursue sports betting, that is something that would have to be discussed with the, the state officials, and then they would have to figure out whether or not sports betting is something that they want to do, because it would take a, a modification to the law to allow that to happen. At what Position. point in time if the Cherokee Nation decided that they would like to pursue that in their request, what would be, need to be done? I mean... Just out of curiosity, where would you start? Uh, that would be probably a question for uh, administration or the AG's office. I, I really don't know. State law is where that has yeah. to start. So this year, I mean, it would start when legislative sessions started back next year. So that's the first step would have to be a change to state law to um, decriminalize sports bet. I see that as a win in revenue, uh, increase in revenue personally. And I think there's a desperate need for it if you're a sports fan. So that's my two cents. <laughs> Thank you. We're sports fans. Got it. We just don't want to be criminals. <laughs> 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 yes, anybody else? Okay. Jamie, good report. Thanks, Appreciate sir. you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Lance. Money last night. You were for the. It, I knew the Warriors would pull it out. Is it? Uh, it they wanted to go seven games. There's revenue involved here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, yes, uh, Mason Morton. Mr. Baker? Yes, sir. Uh, we received a report from Self Governance. I don't know if there's anyone here from Self Governance. Karen Ketcher. Uh, they just inserted a, you might say, a flyer for anyone interested in going to dental school. Uh, I would just suggest to any counselors if they have any students interested in that they could probably secure that information locally university of oklahoma rather than going to buffalo new york so uh i just want to mention that because i don't know where this came from but uh it's an admirable endeavor i'm sure but we can our cherokee students could find out this information locally but anyway if self-governance is listening I'd be glad to share, sit down with them and share my input on it Okay. Yes. Nice. Good morning. I don't have anything new to add since the last report. I did do a um, partial report. It doesn't take care of the entire month, but we'll follow up and incorporate all the stats for the month for the next meeting. Okay. Uh, do, are there any questions? Any questions for Nason? Yes, Councilor. Last question. Request to talk with you after the meeting. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Good report. Thank you very much. Old business, none pending, new business, discussion only, tarot law, Councilor Hardy Buzzer. I brought this up uh, last meeting. I've looked over the title for tarot, and it looks to me like that the barman is pretty much taken care of in the law as it stands to me. Now, there may be some changes, but what I brought up is the fact that uh, the contractor is debarred 
there's nothing in our law that prevents him from coming back and forming another company a month after this happens. And that's what I'd like to see get uh, put back into, or put into our tarot law to keep that from happening. And I think we all know just recently that's happened. We had a contractor on one of our roads project that uh, didn't get debarred. He didn't get debarred, but probably should have. But he went back and formed another company using the using an Indian known person to, to be the 51% owner. And that's what I wanted to bring forward here to see if there's any interest, interested people that can see if we can keep that from happening. I think we should do something like that. Uh, that doesn't keep the, uh, anybody from get uh, debarred. Uh, right now, he can go back and form another company within a month or three months or six months. So there's not anything in our laws that uh, keep that from happening. So I just want to throw that out there to see what the other committee members feel about it. I feel strongly about it. I don't think it's right. And that's the reason I brought it forward. So I'd just like to open it up for discussion. Uh, Diane, would you, uh, we may meet you involved in this. We do not have anything in policy that addresses that debarment that I know of. Uh, we haven't had these type of circumstances either in the past so this is a very unusual case we've had a federal debarment and then we had another one that was contingent upon on being debarred okay. we've not had any others that have come in recently i think what uh, councilman uh, buzzard is talking about is that with the tarot when we certify <coughs> he didn't want us to look at uh, giving a bid to say me if i had a company and i was 51 percent owner and I went out here and bid on another project, and if I hadn't finished this, then we wouldn't do that. But that doesn't fall under tarot. We've got several businesses where I could be on two or three businesses, and I may only be 10% on one, I may be 20% on one, I could be 51 on the other one, but I may have several partners, and that wouldn't preclude me from getting certified as a tarot vendor or for that company. Uh, I, as I explained to uh, him earlier, that probably out of all of the uh, tarot businesses that are certified, probably maybe around one third of them actually come in and bid on projects with CNB and the tribal government. And uh, what we need to do is we need to tweak a few things because where a business sells a company in the middle of a project, we don't have anything written in there and we need to do that. Uh, I've met with uh, Jamie, our uh, acting treasurer and I've met with uh, uh, Michael Lynn who has his procedures and what we need to do is the roads department that does their own bidding process we need to look at their process how they're using it we need to look at uh, the procurement and then what we do in tarot so that it's a seamless process and we've all been in discussion about this since uh, this came up May the 13th and uh, we don't have any problems in tweaking that in fact we've already started working on that and we know that you have a new council coming in and I know that there will be an orientation and if you all would allow us to uh, do that we would appreciate that because we can have it done in several months maybe one month one week whatever we need to do okay I'm gonna add just a little. Has, a, oh. has a comment first um, you know looking at this whole deal um, and the way it started and the way it's gone uh, I still think the biggest deal that we that could have happened to prevent all of this is just better communication. Um, if we're given, like I said, four lines in a book, and that's what we look at, and that's what we read, um, then you know we're trying to infer what's going on from that, and we're trying to make a, a, a valid uh, decision on what to do on something this big when there's a whole story behind what's going on. And I think you know if we're told that story, then we can make a a good educated decision on what to do I don't think we probably would have been here <coughs> if we would have been presented that information so in the future I think you know especially it would be good because you know we're asking pointed questions to people and we're kind of shooting arrows in them you know and it's not really their deal to get shot you know because it's not their fault that 
that this happened. It's, it, there's other circumstances, but we don't know those circumstances, so we only react to what we're given. So I think in the future, you know, if we're given, if there is a backstory behind it, we need to be given that information so you know, we can make a good, educated decision on what to do. And going forward, we can do that. Okay. Speaker, I just want to add um, specifically about um, Councilman Buzzer's question, the memo and attachments that Ms. Kelly provided to you all last time that had the actual regulations for disbarment. One of the reasons that you can disbar someone is if any of their principals or owners had previously <coughs> been disbarred for a business. So there is a mechanism, not because they were laid on a payment of contract or, or a completion of a contract, but if, if a company is disbarred and the owners of that company create a new company, simply because <coughs> they were owners of a previously disbarred company subjects them to disbarment. So there is a there is a process currently to do that in the regulations. It's not it's not laid out in the statute, but I, I think that somewhat addresses your issue. So I just wanted to let you know in the in the regulations that she provided last time attached to the memo, it has that process in there. Okay. Oh, comment? Yes, Councillor Watkins. <coughs> Who holds uh, these people accountable? Holds who accountable? The, the, the tarot companies. Uh, the tarot companies, we have a certification process that we do every year. And if there is a, a tarot vendor uh, that is not doing good work and it's reported and it's investigated, then that is so noted so that when they come up for recertification, then they may not be recertifi recertified, depending on what the, uh, so what it is. The people that, accountable? who holds them accountable. Well, they may not get recertified on our end uh, from so is that, is, that, is that your department? We do, we do the certification, yes, and we monitor the Indian preference. That's what Tarot does. Why does the treasurer have to be involved? Um, the treasurer is involved if it escalates to a point where that there has been letters sent out and they're negligent in responding and they're not doing very good work they're not doing shot they're doing shoddy work and we haven't had any dialogue with them and <laughs> we've had various complaints maybe they're not meeting their payrolls there's a lot of things that that could be used but that's where it would be investigated and it would be turned over to the debarment committee the debarment committee is comprised of the treasurer's the chair a representative from uh, the acquisition management department someone from c and b's acquisition management and then someone from tarot and the fifth person on that committee would be uh, uh, selected by the treasurer okay so sounds like the treasurer plays a pretty central role in in the case that we're talking about right here no it didn't escalate to that. It never escalated yeah. to that. Well, we're talking about shoddy work. Mm -hmm. And so if your shoddy work done, it goes to this treasurer with this uh, debarment <coughs> committee that you guys formed. Uh, no. Is that, is, that, is that wrong or right? There was a company that Mom, got the bid, and I'm not going to mention work. any names. It's not shoddy work, but it's... No. It was not, not shoddy work. work. Right. Not, not, not shoddy work, but... They didn't fall through on their end of the promise uh, of their agreement. No. We had a tarot, we had a non tarot vendor that got a project. They sold their company in the middle of the project to another road project. The other road project decided they didn't want to do the work, and there was another tarot company that was formed, and one of the members had worked with that other vendor. They stepped up and said they would finish the project. Hmm. So in the beginning, it was not a tarot certified. Correct. And then a tarot certified vendor entered into to try to finish up the work. What percentage is the work completed, if I may ask? I believe Michael Lynn is at about 90%. 90-95%. 90-95%. And what is the estimated <clears throat> time to complete? I think in the next 30, 45 days, the project will be wrapped up. They were installing the really yesterday. Okay, so, so there, there was a lot that's taken place in yes. the last couple months then because last time you reported, it was about three quarters of the way done. So <coughs> there's a lot that's been done between now and, I mean, then and now. Is that, is that accurate? So the, the job that is at hand with, the, with this project, 
they're uh, that, that you guys subbed it out to another group to finish it up or the uh, you say you guys I did I didn't do that I'm the tarot the, 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 the tarot the, the, the tarot company that had the original bid on on this project that they ended up contracting out to someone else to complete the project no no Michael, you probably need to come up here. <laughs> <coughs> I'm just going to warn you guys. We're not going to mention any names. Okay. And don't ask us uh, for names. Talina, uh, keep, keep the pulse on this because uh, this proprietary information, some of this. Go ahead. We should be just discussing the process. Really. Okay. Go ahead. Our contract with the original bidder is still intact. Okay. We, we have not subbed anything out. We have not... Uh, got anyone else to come in and complete the work that original comp company that our contract is still with is still intact the name is still intact they did sell the assets to another company okay in the midst of this project in the middle of this project um, the other company that was formed mm -hmm. is who's come has came in on under under the previous okay. company's yeah. doings uh -huh. has came in and and is, is completing the project gotcha and that's a tarot vendor yes okay all right, I understand that. Yes. Okay. That's very unusual to be in the middle of a contract and disband uh, the company. Uh, are are we utilizing the road? Yes, the road is currently open. Okay, so That's we're our people are driving on it. It is it's open. It's been it's been open the entire time. Although during under construction, it was it was rough as you can imagine. Uh, but it's been paved now for months. It's been paved for several several months. Uh, the what was lacking was some permanent signage uh, and guardrail, and the guardrail the permanent signage is up. Uh, the guardrail, as I said, was be, was being uh, worked on yesterday and today, and I they, it should could be done this week. I'd have to get with the contractor to find out. Uh, it shouldn't take too long to do the. To, uh, replace the guardrail that was taken down. Um, Diane mentioned to me the uh, the fact that the guardrail specifications changed during the t during the course of the of the project when it was bid. Uh, guardrail changes frequently, as you can imagine, it's a safety item, uh, so it changes. Uh, it can change annually, it can change every two years, but it, it did. The specifications did change, so the type of guardrail that we had spec spec in the project when it was originally bid. I did that, get that, changed. That, when you say change, are you ta are you saying the change order? No, no, I'm not no. saying the change order. I'm hey, saying just the specifications changed. The specifications changed on the on the type of guardrail that we spec'd originally. Uh, we have we're not paying any additional money. Uh, it, it, that did create somewhat of a delay in getting the the uh, n the new guardrail in that is uh, currently being spec'd by Federal Highway Administration. So. Okay. Well, it's uh, <clears throat> it, so it sounds like there's already a process in place for for this type of behavior. We're just not we just didn't enforce it in this case for whatever reason. So, uh, are are all of you all aware that the roads department does their own write-ups, their own bidding, and all that? It but doesn't it, go through the procurement. This is a office. this is a tarot issue. That that there's there was a tarot vendor that came in, didn't complete a project, and, and it was no, the, it was no, the, no, 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 it is not a tarot. It was not a tarot vendor. I'm advocating oh, a, a tarot for the tarot vendor actually coming in and partner with the non-tarot vendor to complete the project. Yes, is that correct. That's correct. That's that is correct. And that's oh, what I'm. I'm try, I, I was trying to explain that. They're the uh, ones that's finishing it. It's a tarot vendor that's finishing it. Well, yeah, I understand that, but originally. Uh, I thought this was a tarot vendor because no. I know the people. So no. Okay, let me ask a question. Other than being delayed, or for months, or however long, what's the quality of the work? The quality of work is good. I mean, we've got had an inspector on site anytime they're up there doing work. We've had an, our inspector there. He works for for me. Uh, quality of work is good. Everything met. All the test requirements were met. Uh, specifications were met. There's no issue with the quality. Uh, the I think that was corrected by, by Councilor Wagenstick, the shoddy work. There's, there's not been any shoddy work up there. Uh, I, I would 
wanting to say something back there, but you sure, corrected sure, yeah. the statement. It, it was it wasn't completed. Yes, it, yeah, yeah. it was Councilor not. Councilor Simbaugh, you agree with that? You, you've probably seen the road. I've driven that road many times. The, the asphalt, they've done a very good job on the asphalt. The only things really they were lacking is around the bridges with the guardrails and things like that. Otherwise, the road is, is very nice, very nice. Well, so what's the solution here, Diane? Uh, if if I could beg your indulgence to allow uh, the treasurer, I mean, Jamie and Michael and I to get together so that our uh, we have a seamless process from the contracting of the roads department because they do all their bids, they have their own procedures, and we just need to make sure that there is something in there if a company sells like this one company so that the work will be completed in a timely fashion. And we can put that insert that in there somewhere and we can make sure that it's very seamless we've already started working on that we started working on it on may the 13th when it was brought up what kind of time frame would you uh, uh your new uh chief and deputy chief and council seated in august we should have something by 90 days yeah when your new people show up for orientation we'll have it break them in right okay councillor buzzer i uh i think chrissy his name of a lot of good point Paul Hill, but uh, it's in there but I, I just don't see it in there what she said it was uh, it's already in there if the person is debarred then we can go back and, and keep him from getting another contract I don't think it's not clear enough to hear it's not clear enough language to what you said Chris to be clear that's in the that's in the regulations it is not in the, the tariff okay that, that's what we need to put is that regulation in there that way I think it would take care of it. okay because the person has done, if we wrote him up to get a debarred, then he wouldn't be able to bid on another contract for however long, however long to set it up. Okay. So I think that would take care of it. Okay. So I would be happy if you guys work on the language and let us take a look at it. We'll be it. glad to do Thanks, sir. Thanks, Mr. Okay, everybody good? Yes, Councilor uh, Wongstead. The, there is an excess of late, <coughs> late fees. Uh, how's that going to work out? There was a excuse me on the late fees what was it yeah the, the late fees it was like was it a thousand dollars a day or something liquidated damages yes liquidated damages it's being assessed uh, so once they complete this project how's that gonna fall, go into play with uh with what we owe them and to what what the what the liquidated damages are i've reported in the past we haven't made a payment to the contractor since june of, of this year uh, there's uh, they've they've completed work during that time but we have not made any payments to them because I wanted just I wanted the project to get done uh, and then at that time we would need to sit back down with them and talk about the days talk about the delays that occurred and ultimately uh, the liquidated damages that will be charged in the end so that's a it's a it's something that we'll have to sit down and talk about and negotiate with the contractor okay. All right. thank you sir. okay anybody else Yes, Councilor Crit. So they will be, they will be fined at the end of the negotiation. It's not really a fine, uh, but it's it's something built into the contract for called liquidated damages that will be assessed. Yes. It's been a big story. Just in case, I want to tell it later. But all right, so we got a non-tarot vendor got this job. It's late, 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 late. Right, the non-tarot. Late, 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 late. <laughs> All right, so a tarot vendor comes in and it's going to finish the work, right? That's correct. Yes. This late, late, late guy has nothing to do with this this company, right? <coughs> partners. <coughs> they are partners. He does have something to do with the tarot company, yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Lee. I'll try to make. Thank you, sir. So, so in the law, and Diane, you'll correct me. I know if I'm wrong. I'm trying to just go by memory. We went Cherokee, Native, Native, other Native. I'm not, not sure exactly how that goes down. And then not Indian is the last. Yes. Do you have control or not over non-Native bidders. I guess I'm confused. Are you saying you don't have any control over them? Well, we do in enacting the fees. 
and the crews because they submit a core crew that's actually going to be out there and then all of the people that work on the project we do we enact fees and we do monitor it and so you monitor and, and so you all have to get together at some point yes thank you okay anybody else <clears throat> well I all I can suggest is try to give us more information so we don't have to read between the lines and we'll come up with a good decision so uh, maybe not next month but the month after give us a report no good next month. <coughs> give us a report give us give us give us an update okay okay we can do that yes, sure, real quick. and does wonderful work with tarot and stuff but the we're talking a lot of hundreds of thousands of dollars right and Tuesday I'm going to get some calls from some students wanting to go to college Tuesday deadlines Monday right and we're going to sit in here <coughs> and chastise that kid for being late right then we're going to have then we're going to have uh, an uphill fight try to get that scholarship to them late kids and, and I don't know these people but but their their lateness should have some consequences that's just my take thank you I agree All right. anybody else okay good report thank you Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilor. <coughs> Councilor Buzzer, are you okay with that? Yes, I think I think it's going to work out. Okay. Satisfying. Well, we got faith in Diane. We'll see how she delivers. <laughs> okay. Any <laughs> announcements? Uh, I got an announcement. So Go ahead. Uh, the 13th July, our good Mid County uh, Community Building down there, the Barron one, real nice facility. I know Brian's mm -hmm. been. They're having their. They call it the uh, 4th of July boom on the 13th and they're inviting um, Cherokee Nation departments to set up if they have some information that they want to um, give to the public and you know artists that may want to sell some things there but it's a big event uh, I was there last year these people's are people are hard workers so any department that wants to come she wanted to be sure to to invite them and of course the council and everybody out here. July 13th, they said they could set up about four o'clock and they'll go on. Good food? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Big firework show, man. Oh, <laughs> Disneyland firework show. Okay. Anybody else? All right. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. We're adjourned.